Hi everybody and welcome to your channel, Spanish Pills, the best YouTube channel to learn to speak Spanish. Hola a todos y a todas, valientes amantes del español y bienvenidos a vuestro canal, Spanish Pills, el mejor canal de YouTube para aprender a hablar español. Okay, what are we going to do in today's video? Well, as you can see, it says top 20 phrasal verbs in Spanish, with examples and definitions. As you already know, in Spanish we don't have phrasal verbs. Actually, for me in particular, it was a nightmare. It is still a bit of a nightmare to deal with them, because I don't really get them. <laughs> But um, I know that in English you use them a lot. So, my main goal is to help you learn how to use those verbs in Spanish. And like always, I will try to make it easy, funny, interesting. Um, I don't know what other adjective I could use. <laughs> Give me a hand here, please. <laughs> okay, you already know my method, so I think... I don't have to say anything else. Oh, just one thing. Remember to subscribe if you haven't yet, okay? Well, are you ready to learn some Spanish? ¿Estáis preparados para aprender un poquito más de español? ¿Sí? Fantástico. 3, 2, 1, comenzamos. Venga, vamos allá. Primer phrasal verb. To run after. In Spanish, perseguir. In English, it means to chase someone or something. Okay, and now I'm going to give you an example. ¿Por qué los gatos persiguen a los perros? Why do cats run after dogs? Good question, by the way. Now, let's pay attention to the... English version and the Spanish version of this example. Let's pay attention to the similarities and to the differences. First thing, something that they both have in common, the verb tense. We use the present in both languages. Good thing. Now let's pay attention to the differences. The first one, the definite article. We love to use the definite article in Spanish. We have to use it before gatos and perros. Remember, los gatos, los perros. And something else, the verb perseguir is a prepositional one. It means that it needs a specific preposition when you use it. So, before los perros, you have to use a preposition, and that preposition is a. Persiguen a los perros. ¿Por qué los gatos persiguen a los perros? Segundo phrasal verb, to run out. In Spanish, acabarse o quedarse sin. Both mean the same, so it's up to you to pick one or the other. In English, the definition of to run out would be to use up or finish a supply of something. Now, let's take a look at the example. Se nos acabó la leche. Or, if you want to use quedarse sin, it would be nos quedamos sin leche. Now, let's compare both examples, the English version and the Spanish version of the same sentence. Pay attention to this. La leche. In Spanish, is the subject. In English, the subject is we. But we have to use we in Spanish, although not as the subject. So, we use the personal pronoun nos. Then, the verb 
is singular because of la leche, the subject, acabó. And then you have the word se. This word is a bit of a mystery in English because it doesn't really exist. It's very complicated to try to explain to you um, the use of this pronoun in Spanish because it has to do with the passive voice and the impersonal sentences and these are grammatical features that you don't need to understand to be able to use these uh, verbs. So you can just learn that whenever you want to say that you run out of something, and you want to translate it using the verb acabarse, the very first word that you have to use is the pronoun se. And then everything else I've already explained to you. Even though it seems at first a bit hard to work with all this, I'm 100% sure that you can do it. So I'm going to tell you a sentence so you can put it into practice. How would you say in Spanish, we run out of almonds? Se nos acabaron las almendras. Remember, milk is the subject in Spanish. In this case, the subject would be almonds. It's plural. So you have to use the definite article, feminine plural, las almendras, and the verb has to be plural too. So that's why we say se nos acabaron las almendras. It wasn't so hard after all, right? Don't panic. It's all about practice. Tercer phrasal verb. To run off. In Spanish, huir o marcharse sin avisar. In English, it means to leave somewhere or someone suddenly. Now, let's take a look at the example. El intruso huyó en cuanto saltó la alarma. This one is almost a word by word translation. The intruder, el intruso. Ran off, huyó. Simple past. As soon as, en cuanto. And then... The only thing that's different is that you put the subject before the verb, which is the correct thing to do. But in Spanish, sometimes we do it the other way to put more emphasis on the verb instead of the subject. In a way, we are paying more attention to the action itself. And by the way, the verb to go off when you have Alarma, la alarma, as the subject, is translated as saltar, like to jump. That's the way we say it. It's a bit weird, I know. Cuarto phrasal verb. To run away. In Spanish, salir corriendo. In English, it means to leave or escape from a place, person or situation. Now, let's take a look at the example. Tuvimos que salir corriendo por el fuego. The only relevant thing about this sentence is the translation of the words because of, in Spanish, por. Other than that, I think there's nothing else to say. It's a very easy sentence to translate. It's almost a word by word translation. Y ahora el quinto y último phrasal verb de este grupo. Because as you've realized, all of these five phrasal verbs that we've been working with have the same verb, to run. In this case, to run into. In Spanish, encontrarse con o tropezarse con. In English, it means to meet with someone unexpectedly. Now, about the example. Ayer me encontré con tu hermana Clara en una zapatería. As you will see, the English version and the Spanish version are very similar. First, the adverb ayer. We usually put it at the beginning of the sentence, but it's not the only place where you can put that word. You can put it at the end. Then we have me encontré. 
Remember that encontrarse is a reflexive verb and every reflexive verb needs a reflexive pronoun. So that's why you have to say me encontré because the subject is yo. Yo me encontré, encontrarse con, to run into, con tu hermana Clara, like in English, en una zapatería. A shoe store, we say zapatería in Spanish. Now, let's try a different phrasal verb. To call off. In Spanish, suspender. In English, it means to cancel an event or agreement. And the example is El desfile de Acción de Gracias del año pasado se suspendió por la lluvia. Now, Let's pay attention to the English version of this sentence. Last year's Thanksgiving Parade. This is translated as El desfile de Acción de Gracias del año pasado. The main word is parade, desfile, masculine and singular. Remember, you have to put the definite article before the noun in Spanish. El desfile. Then, Thanksgiving Parade is translated as El Desfile de Acción de Gracias. And Last Year's is translated as Del Año Pasado. So, Last Year's Thanksgiving Parade is translated as El Desfile de Acción de Gracias del Año Pasado. I know, too many words and the word order in Spanish is completely different. I understand that at first sight... If this is the first time you see this, it might be a bit confusing, but it's not so hard. Trust me. Let's move on. The verb tense. In English, you use the passive voice, was called off. But in Spanish, we don't. Sometimes we can do this. We can use a verb. We can turn a verb into a reflexive one. So in this case... Instead of suspender, we're using the reflexive verb suspenderse. That's why we have to use a reflexive pronoun, se, because the subject is el desfile. It would be it in English, in Spanish it would be el. And then you just use the simple past of the verb suspenderse, se suspendió. And because of, por, the rain, la lluvia. Please don't panic if you think this sentence was too difficult, because you're right. It was a very challenging sentence to translate, but it's all about practice. Don't give up, okay? Now let's see another phrasal verb. To call back. In Spanish, volver a llamar. In English, it means to telephone someone again. And the example is, te vuelvo a llamar cuando llegue a casa del trabajo. Okay, about the English version of this sentence. Let's start with the verb tense. I will call you. I used the future And in Spanish, I decided to use the present, but I could have used the future as well. They both mean the same. It would be, te vuelvo a llamar, or te volveré a llamar. Then we have the word when, cuando, and then I get home from work. Llegue a casa del trabajo. There is something weird in this translation right? Did you notice that in English you used the present simple of the verb to get home, when I get home? But in Spanish, if I had used the present, it would have been cuando llego a casa. And that's not the translation that I am sharing with you, right? Well, The secret is that we are supposed to use the subjunctive in Spanish, in this case. 
The subjunctive, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it's not easy to understand, it's not easy to learn, it's not easy to use. So please be patient. I will work on making a video focusing on the subjunctive. I will try to give you tips and I will try to share with you some examples and rules so you can learn to use it. But for now, just learn to say this sentence in Spanish this way. Now, another phrasal verb to call for. In Spanish, pedir o exigir. In English, to ask for or demand something. And the example. Cuando la encontraron muerta en la bañera, la policía exigió una investigación. Now, let's compare the English version with the Spanish one. The first thing. The verb tense. She was found. Passive voice. And in Spanish, we don't use the passive voice. It is as if we were saying in English, when they found her. That's the translation into Spanish. Cuando la encontraron. When you don't know exactly who found someone, you use they as the subject. About the rest of the sentence is a word-by-word -word translation. The word muerta, feminine and singular, because the subject is she, ella. She was found dead in the bathtub, en la bañera. La policía exigió, the police called for, in both languages, simple past, an investigation, una investigación. To move on, in Spanish, seguir adelante. In English, it means to accept that a situation has changed and be ready to deal with new experiences. The example. No te preocupes. Te recuperarás muy pronto y seguirás adelante con tu vida. Don't worry. No te preocupes. And the rest of the sentence is a word by word translation. In both languages, we're using the same verb tense, so there's nothing else to say. To move away, in Spanish, mudarse. In English, it means to go to live in another area. The example, nos mudamos cuando despidieron a mi marido. Notice that the verb mudarse is a reflexive one, so it needs a reflexive pronoun. That's why the first word in Spanish is nos, because we don't have to use the subject because of the ending of the verb. We don't have to say nosotros nos mudamos, but just nos mudamos cuando, when, despidieron a mi marido, when my husband got fired. In Spanish, we would say when they fired my husband. Remember, if you don't know who the subject is, in Spanish you use they as the subject. Ellos despidieron a mi marido. To move up. In Spanish, ascender. In English, it means to advance or rise to a higher level. The example. Estamos celebrando que mi mujer fue ascendida al puesto de gerente. Estamos celebrando. Like in English, present continuous. Now we have to introduce a second sentence, so we need a connector in Spanish. And that connector is que. Then, my wife. Mi mujer or mi esposa. It means the same. Fue ascendida. Passive voice. Like in English. And then, to the position of manager. Tú, a, de, el. But we put it together as just one word. Al. Then, position, puesto, masculine, singular. That's why the definite article is masculine and singular. El, al puesto. Of manager. De, gerente. Now, to move along. In Spanish, avanzar. In English, it means to develop or progress 
in a satisfactory or reasonable manner. The example. El proyecto está avanzando correctamente y todo estará listo a tiempo. Now, in both languages, we are using the same verb tense in the first sentence. The person continues. But now, pay attention to the adverb correctamente. In English, I've used the adverb well, that means bien, in Spanish. But in this context, it fits better in Spanish, the adverb correctamente. Now, about the second sentence, everything, todo, estará, futuro, like in English, will be, listo. Listo is an adjective, ready, that makes allusion to el proyecto. That's why it's masculine and singular. And then, on time, a tiempo. To calm down, calmar, or in English, to make something or someone less agitated. The example, no sé, I don't know, qué hacer, what to do, para calmarla, to calm her down, to, para. And then, in Spanish, when you have an infinitive and a personal pronoun, you put it together as just one word, calmarla, a ella. Her. To close down. In Spanish, cerrar permanentemente. But I put the word permanentemente into brackets because we don't usually include it in the sentence. You will see it in the example. Or in English, to cease or cause to cease the activity of a company or a business permanently. Muchos restaurantes están cerrando. In both languages, we're using the same verb tense, the present continues, permanentemente into brackets because we wouldn't say it in Spanish, and then because of, por, the global economic crisis. Global, in Spanish, we say mundial, and the word order is a bit different. Crisis económica mundial. To break into, entrar a robar. Or in English, to enter or open a place, vehicle or container forcibly, especially for the purposes of theft. The example, anoche, last night, alguien, someone. Then in English, we use the past simple, and in Spanish, we use the preterite. Entró a robar en casa de mis vecinos. To get married, casarse. Or in English, to begin a legal relationship with someone as their husband or wife. The example. ¿Cuándo os casasteis? In English, about the verb tense we are using, we are using the simple past. In Spanish, we are using the preterite. But more important than that is the fact that the verb casarse is a reflexive one. And what happens when we are using a reflexive verb? that we need a reflexive pronoun. Muy bien. In this case, os, because the subject is vosotros. To make up, reconciliarse. But this verb has many different translations into Spanish. This is just one of them. Or in English, to become friends, again, after an argument. The example, Ana y Alicia... Se reconciliaron después del concierto. About the verb tense, in English, we're using the simple past. In Spanish, we're using the preterite. But remember, it's a reflexive verb, so we're going to need a reflexive pronoun. That's why we use se. Ellas, the subject, se reconciliaron. So far, so good. Now pay attention to this. The word after means después. But when you have more words after the word after, like in this case, the concert, you have to say in Spanish, después de. If it was after the party, it would be después de la fiesta. Del concierto. Del is de plus el, the definite article, masculine singular, because concert is masculine and singular in Spanish. To find out, averiguar, or in English, 
to discover a fact or piece of information. The example. Necesito averiguar la verdad. In both languages, we are using the same verb tense, the present simple. Necesito. And then we use an infinitive. But notice that in Spanish, we don't need to put anything in between. Necesito averiguar. But in English, you have to put a word in between. To. To ask for. Pedir. Or in English, to speak or write to someone because you want them to give you something. The example. I don't know why, no sé por qué, it's so hard, es tan difícil, for me, para mí, pedir ayuda, to ask for help. In both languages, we use the infinitive. Pedir ayuda. To get on well, to establish a friendly relationship, or in Spanish, Llevarse bien. The example. Me llevo bien con mi suegra. In both languages, we are using the same verb tense, the present simple. But notice that llevarse bien is a reflexive verb and it needs a reflexive pronoun. So that's why we have to use the word me, because the subject is yo. Yo me llevo bien con mi suegra. Suegra, mother-in-law in English. Ultimo phrasal verb, to call for, or to ask for or demand something. In Spanish, pedir o exigir. The example, cuando la encontraron muerta en la bañera, la policía exigió una investigación. The first sentence, in English you use the passive voice, was found, but in Spanish we use the preterite. And notice this, when in Spanish we don't know who the subject is, we use they, and we use the masculine. So, cuando la encontraron, ellos, muerta en la bañera, la policía exigió, called for, in both cases we are using the same verb tense, the preterite, una investigación, an investigation. Okay, we made it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Remember, like and subscribe. More videos are on the way. Hasta pronto. Adios.